So they this $20 million guy, but they reach 60 million in benefits. Wow. And I have some people from your city do it. It seems Cat Williams was hinting at Beyonce in his comments. Why, you may ask? Well, it appears that Queen Bey might not be the person we all thought she was. I always it's said so, she was the original Beyonce. Beyonce yeah. stole her steez. Oh, you think so? Look at Crazy in Love video and look at A. Marie. You Why fall we fall in love? <laughs> And when she's not grabbing their creative ideas and sidelining them, she's straight up ending their careers for speaking up against her. And buy them, and that that's what business they're in. Why would you think it would be weird if they flipped out and said a story that turned out to not be true? I think by now, I don't need to tell you that Cat Williams has been on a relentless spree of exposing. If I do, then you're probably living under a rock or just in denial. Lately, the comedian has moved his focus from folks like Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer to the big leagues, specifically the Carter family, or more precisely, Beyonce. And it seems our beloved Queen Bee might not be as saintly as she's portrayed in the media. Of course, Beyonce doesn't need an introduction. She's, well, Beyonce, a symbol of peak fame for many. But according to Williams, it looks like she might have steam rolled quite a few people to get to where she is. Williams isn't just throwing around baseless accusations. He suggesting there's a figurative blood trail left by Beyonce in her rise to the top. At a time when R&B ruled, Beyonce emerged victorious among numerous competitors. We all thought it was her talent and, of course, her stunning looks. But Williams hints at a more sinister path to success, involving sidelining or even sacrificing her rivals. This isn't the first time such dark tales have been whispered in Hollywood, and Williams is boldly stepping up to shed light on these claims right at Beyonce's doorstep. Considering Beyonce's immense influence, it's no wonder Williams's allegations have caused quite a stir, with some accusing him of seeking attention. However, if there's one thing consistent about Cat, it's his reputation for honesty, despite being labeled as crazy or a druggie. So what does this imply about Beyonce? Beyonce has been trying to write me out of my own narrative for like years at this point. Like this is... Beyonce has consistently been at the forefront of the industry for years, captivating the world since she started performing at just nine years old. Her influence is so immense that fans become restless when she takes a break from releasing new music. Now, as Jay-Z's partner, they're arguably the most influential couple in Hollywood, rubbing elbows with the biggest names across various sectors, including politics. This status has made Beyonce a model for success in the entertainment world. Yet, it seems that the people who have elevated her to this position haven't been entirely honest about who she really is when the spotlight fades. This is where Cat Williams steps in. Beyond comedy, Cat has become somewhat of an industry whistleblower, always ready to divulge what happens behind the scenes. Lately, he's been particularly focused on this, shedding light on the darker aspects of Hollywood's glamour. Every, all lies will be exposed, that's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. While Kat's interview, where he criticizes his fellow entertainers, circulates online, discussions about him are not new. Previously, the comedian, who sometimes raps, highlighted how many industry events are pre-planned by top figures in secret meetings. He insists that unexpected incidents, such as Will Smith hitting Chris Rock on live TV or Janet Jackson's wardrobe mishap, are orchestrated for the advantage of certain industry insiders. There was forethought and a plan. Somebody, even if it looks like, yeah, Janet Jackson just had a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, there's no such thing. Correct. Who are you blaming? I okay, believe I blaming? believe that. This specific instance Kat highlighted seems strikingly similar to the situation involving Beyonce and Amory, where the latter's career essentially plummeted. Amory, despite being raised in a conservative family with stringent restrictions and a seemingly narrow path to a music career, managed to break through. She rode the wave of success until she encountered significant obstacles while working on her second album in 2004. In her search for help, she approached Rich Harrison, a producer who had not only previously collaborated with her on her debut album, All I Have, but also had ties with J.Lo and Beyonce. Harrison and his team quickly produced the lead single, One Thing, in a mere two to three hours. The track was met with enthusiasm and was immediately forwarded to Amory's label, Columbia Records, sparking anticipation for its release. The record label wasn't impressed. They desired more impactful choruses. Faced with this feedback, Amory and Harrison dove back into refining the song, adhering to the label's requests. Yet each new 
version they submitted was met with rejection. Amory expressed frustration, feeling misunderstood by the industry insiders. In a bold move after six months of toil and still without approval, they decided to bypass the label's hesitations by leaking one thing directly to radio stations. This decision sparked a tug of war with Columbia Records, which, according to Ameria, seemed intent on stifling the singly's success to prioritize Jennifer Lopez's upcoming album, Rebirth. Despite the label's efforts, radio stations refused to drop one thing from their rotations, ultimately securing Amari the official release she was fighting for. Meanwhile, Jennifer Lopez released Get Right, another Harrison-produced track fueling speculation and whispers among fans. Internet sleuths didn't stop there. They began to draw connections between Beyoncé's 2003 anthem Crazy in Love and Amari's work, particularly noting similarities in the vibrant brass hooks that characterized both One Thing and Why Don't We Fall in Love. In a 2004 MTV interview, Beyoncé herself highlighted the unique horn hook of Crazy in Love, attributing its success to its nostalgic, go-go-infused vibe. She admitted to initial doubts about whether audiences would embrace the song's old-school essence. This revelation only added fuel to the speculative fire with fans comparing the tracks and pondering the true origins of the sounds that catapulted Crazy in Love to the top of the charts. Here lies the intricate web of music industry dynamics, where creativity, influence, and timing converge in mysterious ways. But wait a minute, didn't Emery talk about people not getting her sound, which coincidentally had that same go-go feel? Anyway, the Bayhive rushed to defend their queen, arguing that Crazy in Love dropped before one thing. But let's rewind a bit. Rich Harrison, Amory's original producer, had Crazy in Love before he jumped ship to work with Beyonce. So, who really had it first? Well, just because a song hit the airwaves first doesn't mean it was conceived first. Amory's sound might have allegedly been swiped long before Beyonce dropped Crazy in Love. It's like a complicated game of musical chairs, with careers on the line. Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles, was apparently pulling the strings. Rich spilled the beans, saying, Yeah, I had it in the chamber. I hadn't really shopped it much because sometimes you don't want to come out of the bag before it's right. People don't really get it, and you'll leave them with a foul taste in their mouth. So, it was just something that I held on to until I got the call from B. Translation, they were strategically holding back to make sure everything was just right. Even fans noticed how Beyonce ripped Amory off her sound. I still listen to Amory's music today. I love her voice, her style. Everything about her is a vibe. Yes, I believe Beyonce and JLo stole her sound, dance moves, and style. But true fans know Amory brought Go-Go to the mainstream, and nobody has done it better than her. Seeing as Amory left music entirely after that, you can probably understand why there might be a narrative that Beyonce may have ended the singer's career for her own musical success. Okay, maybe if it were just Amory, we could write it off as a one-time thing. But this was far from the case as there have been a couple of other suspicious situations where people's careers flopped, and it all led back to Queen Bay. If you don't know sisters Hallie and Chloe Bailey from the series of shows and movies they've been in, then you probably know that both women have the voices of angels. Aside from their obvious talent, Chloe and Hallie's meteoric success can partly be attributed to Beyonce. Chloe first met the musician in 2003, when she played a younger version of Beyonce's character in The Fighting Temptations. She and her sister Hallie were later signed to Bay's Parkwood Entertainment Management Company and have been guided by the superstar ever since. So far, Chloe X. Holly have been nominated for four Grammys and have individually gone on to acting success. But that's only half the story. Chloe's journey, especially, has been anything but smooth sailing. And guess what? Many fans are pointing fingers at none other than Beyonce. Despite their work on TV projects and Chloe releasing a project early last year, the turnout was underwhelming, to say the least. Imagine being signed to Beyonce and your debut album. Album, in pieces, barely scrapes together 10,000 sales. Fans were quick to unleash their disappointment on social media, squarely blaming Queen Bee for not lifting a finger to promote Chloe's work. Beyonce literally hates her lol, didn't do a thing for the album, couldn't even snag her a feature, and she's not even warming up the crowd for her on tour. One critic blasted on Twitter. Another was baffled. Not to joke, but seriously, why did Beyonce even sign Chloe? Was it just for show? Because how do you let your artist release an album and not support it at all? Now she's stuck at 10k sales. What was the point? The confusion and frustration among the fans are palpable. Some believe Beyonce intentionally kept Chloe from outshining her, effectively dimming her protege's spotlight. But hold up. It seems Beyonce's knack for limiting others extends beyond a one-time incident. Once could be luck, twice might be coincidence, but thrice? That's a pattern of pure villainy. Enter the scene. Beyonce's third 
controversial move. This time, Azealia Banks takes center stage, and she's not holding back her grudge. Azealia, known for her fiery critiques, recently blasted Beyonce, comparing her world tour to a lackluster cabaret. Despite her previous excitement for the Renaissance tour, Banks chose to stay in her mansion, criticizing Beyonce for not supporting other black female artists, while chasing collaborations with stars like the Dixie Chicks, Shakira, and Adele. Banks's beef with Beyonce isn't new. It dates back to 2022 when she accused Bay of trying to erase her contributions to house music. After Beyonce's Break My Soul release, Banks claimed Beyonce used her work as inspiration without acknowledgement. She vented her frustration on social media, accusing Beyonce of exploiting the house music scene and its black artists for her gain. Azealia's outrage isn't just about the tour, it's a deep-seated issue with how she perceives Beyonce's influence and actions in the industry. Banks is absolutely livid, calling out Beyonce for what she sees as a downright eerie move. This is freaking creepy, Banks exclaims, accusing Beyonce of trying to erase her from her own story for years. She's baffled by Beyonce's attempt to possibly label her early work as vintage while ignoring Banks's recent hits that, in her view, totally eclipse Beyonce's own work. Are you trying to say my music is old news while pretending you're the trendsetter? As if my last tracks didn't totally outshine yours? Please. Banks scoffs at the idea of being sidelined, pointing out how Beyonce seemingly wanted others, like Solange or Chloe Bailey, to be in the spotlight, completely ignoring Banks's contributions to house, dance, and electronic music. You're trying so hard to make it like I'm nobody, to freeze my legacy in time. You're a freaking stalker, Beyonce. Keeping tabs on everything I do? She vents. Banks's intense focus on Beyonce suggests there's more to her accusations. She implies that Beyonce's strategy has always been to borrow from other creatives to secure her spot at the top. This echoes Cat Williams's sentiments about the industry. Not everything is as it seems. Williams, too, has dropped hints about industry deviants set to be unmasked this year, stirring more intrigue about what really goes on behind the scenes. Cat Williams dropped a bombshell, pointing fingers at Diddy as one of the industry's so-called deviants. And guess who's been cozying up with Diddy for years? None other than Queen Bey herself. It's almost old news now how Diddy and Jay-Z, two moguls who rose to fame around the same era, have kept their brotherhood tight through thick and thin. But where there's Diddy, there's drama. Controversy clings to him like a shadow. From whispers of dark dealings to rumors of forcing artists into unspeakable acts for cash, Diddy's reputation is a minefield. And in the midst of all this chaos, Beyonce has been a constant. It begs the question, why has this dazzling diva remained mum about the storm of scandals surrounding her husband's buddy? The silence is deafening, especially with the whispers getting louder about Diddy's life hitting a rough patch. In a shocking turn of events last November, singer Cassie, real name Cassandra Ventura, dropped a bombshell lawsuit against her ex, Diddy, accusing him of physical and emotional abuse throughout their time together. This revelation has left many wondering why Beyonce keeps getting dragged into the mix. Well, it's not just Jay-Z's tight-knit bond with Diddy. Beyonce herself has a history with him, marked by their 2003 musical collab. In summertime, Beyonce croons about finding the one, a love so deep it brings out the best in both. Diddy, in his verse, pledges undying love and dreams of grand adventures in search of treasure even hinting at an engagement with lines that promise to cherish her heart forever. Released as the B-side to the blockbuster hit Crazy in Love, Summertime made its mark, peaking at number 35 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. Critics hailed it as a feel-good dance track that perfectly captured the essence of a carefree summer love. Beyoncé herself has expressed a special fondness for the song, featuring it in her tours in the early 2000s. This collaboration hints at a past camaraderie between Beyoncé and Diddy, raising questions about their current standing and what this connection might imply about Beyoncé's character. So, what's your take on this tangled web of relationships and controversies? That wraps up our deep dive for now. Until next time, goodbye.